Good morning on this uh, Thanksgiving uh, a week. Uh, just to let you know that on uh, Wednesday uh, we will celebrate uh, uh, St. Catherine's, uh, which is in combination with uh, Thanksgiving Day, as we do every year. Uh, we combine that, and that would be on uh, a Wednesday uh, at 9.30 in the morning we will have it, and we will have the liturgy for uh, St. Catherine and for Thanksgiving Day. So I encourage you to be here uh, on Thanksgiving Day because, again, I think that's the best way to celebrate Thanksgiving. I, I put that in some of the writings, that the best way to, to, uh, to, uh, to thank God is by worship and coming to the liturgy. And uh, if you can, of course. But anyway, that's, uh, that, that is open to all of us on Wednesday at 9.30. Talking about uh, Thanksgiving, uh, many of us, again, uh, do thank God. I think we all do. However, uh, to what degree do we thank God? Uh, many of us uh, thank the Lord uh, because we count our blessings. So we, uh, you know, we have children, or we've gone to college, or we have uh, a good jobs, we have uh, whatever it is. Our bankroll is there, all those kinds of things, and we give thanks to God. I know most of us uh, do that. Not everybody, but most of us do that, and we give thanks uh, to the Lord. Uh, however, uh, giving thanks to the Lord is not for all the things that we have, uh, we should give thanks to God for the things that uh, in our whole life, even if we're, when we are uh, 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 caught up into some disaster or, or sorrow or whatever it may be, uh, losing a job or whatever it may be. Uh, today with this uh, virus and all that kind of thing, uh, some of us might be, if we're affected by it, whatever, whatever it may be, that we ought to still give thanks to God. It's not only for the things that, uh, that are good and uh, that we receive. Yes, of course we give thanks to God. But give thanks to God for all things. Even in our sorrow, even in our uh, times of distress and anxiety and all that kind of uh, situations that we may be caught in. Why? Because that's life. That's the way life is. Uh, God is the giver of life. He doesn't promise us, as we might say, a rose garden. We might say it that way. Uh, he doesn't promise us that. He promises life, uh, and he promises us uh, uh, eternal life. So how do we gain that eternal life? We gain that eternal life uh, by giving thanks to him, recognizing him as our creator and our savior, and giving thanks for, for that. And no matter what comes in our lives, do not to forget uh, giving thanks to the Lord. I know many, uh, uh, you know, if they lose something or something goes wrong in their life, they, they blame God. They blame God because uh, they, they, they find themselves in distress. As if we say uh, we, have, uh, we can tell God what to do. Uh, God didn't give me this. In other words, we can, as if we control God. And, we, and when, we, uh, when we lose something, that we blame God. That's not... That's not proper. It's not the way we ought to be. So th that's what Thanksgiving is. Thank God for the life, life giving, and all the things that we do have, and all the things that we suffer with. Even that, we give thanks to our Lord. And now we'll begin the Divine Liturgy, and we'll say more later.
but you are fellow citizens with the, with the saints and members of the household of God, and built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure is joined together, and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built into it for a dwelling place of God and his spirit. Peace be unto you, the reader. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Sofia, Sofia, tu sume fai lo pancino. Ereni pace. Ieri confermo di su.
and, uh, and I think you all know it, that the best way to give thanksgiving to God is through our, our, uh, our worship. Coming to worship is giving thanksgiving. As a matter of fact, that's the word for, for the liturgy, uh, it's called Estiria, that we give thanks to the Lord, and uh, uh, since we celebrate that all together as a nation, as a nation, uh, and if you can come here on Wednesday, uh, that'll be great. For Thanksgiving and for St. Catherine. Uh, I'll just uh, mention a little bit about the uh, fast. The, uh, we mentioned about the fast, we're still in it. We, did, we, we started on December, uh, uh, November 15th, and it ends on December, Christmas uh, Eve. <clears throat> and as I say in here, it's never too late. If you want to fast, <clears throat> you want to try it, and do so, and uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful uh, uh, discipline for us. Stewardship, we're still on stewardship. Uh, many of you have uh, already sent in your uh, pledge cards. Uh, if you haven't, uh, again, give us a thought, you know, give us some thought. What can I do? What can I do to the, for the best of the church? How much can I afford? Uh, again, uh, I think again on a, on a weekly basis, uh, and I said it before, if you get $20 a week, $20 a week, you would have that $1,000. You would be on a $1,000 store, $20 a week. I know for many of you it's, it's difficult, and, uh, and if it's difficult, you don't do it, that's fine. That's quite all right with me. I just mentioned again, uh, someone, and uh, I think you're all know her, I won't mention her name, but uh, she had a, a very low income, she worked on a low income, and when I said that, twenty dollars, she said, "Oh my goodness! Now that you put it that way, I could be a one thousand steward. I can afford twenty dollars a week." And that's the way she put it. And a very low income, like I said, and for her, it was important for her to to, to be a, you know, as uh, loving and giving to the church as could be. So if you could do that, that's fine. Fill out your pledge card, and if you can't, that's fine too. I know many of us struggle with that twenty dollars. Could be a lot of money for many of us. So, uh, so nice stuff for everybody. Uh, just for those who can afford, and you can do that, that's great. That's great. We are going to have again as well raises, uh, pastry sales, Christmas pastry sales. Uh, I think that I think uh, 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 flyers are going to be given out. Uh, also, the Basi Lopita, the twenty for twenty dollars, the New Year's uh, bread that we get from the monastery, it has a year on it. It'll have the year on it, 2021. And there was, uh, and you cut it at the house, you cut it at your home, uh, for the whole family, and uh, whoever gets the coin again, uh, supposedly has good fortune for the year. But I think when we cut the bread, and somebody in the family gets it, it's for the whole family, good fortune for the whole family. So let's watch the Lopita, $20. And by the way, we have a time limit with that one. Because the monastery uh, needs to know exactly how, they, how many they're going to make. Um, because the, uh, last year, or during the program, I think it was the Easter, they made so many, and we were not, going to go, we were not able to, uh, uh, to, uh, you know, to uh, get them, and they made thousands of them. And they actually got stuck with it because we couldn't go to the monastery uh, to get them. So that's why they, they want. You don't want to get stuck again. So, if you have an order, you want uh, Zespina or I think Stephanie also, uh, will be taking uh, for the Basilote and the Christmas pieces. Uh, I believe, I'm not sure if it is. But anyway, for the Basilote, if you want to do it, And the rest you can read uh, here uh, in the, 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 on the, on the, uh, the canvas there. Okay, uh, this, uh, this uh, gospel reading again is, uh, is uh, it's kind of curious that all these uh, gospel uh, these gospel readings about the rich man, about the, the rich man, if you remember Lazarus, and uh, he, he dies and he look up into heaven and he's looking at, uh, at, at uh, Lazarus, and, uh, and he was talking about and he was talking to Abraham. And now we have, uh, then you had the rich young lawyer, I think we did that last week, and he comes to Jesus and he was trying to justify himself on how to be, how to be good and all that kind of stuff. And now we have another rich man here that we're going to talk about, 
and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and it comes at the time of stewardship. It's just a coincidence that it comes at the time of stewardship. But anyway, uh, this rich man here, uh, and I, met, I mentioned this one again, it's kind of like a repeat sermon. Uh, if you heard it before, that's great. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, repetition is good because we remember through repetition. So I will repeat the sermon again. Uh, of this uh, rich man, uh, again, uh, he's very wealthy. He's, uh, he's ready to retire. And, but he's very wealthy. He said, where am I going to do all my money? He said, I don't know what are my crops and all that. I know what to do. I'm going to build a barn. I'm going to put more wheat in it. And I'm going to, and I'm going to, I'm going to do all these things uh, to uh, sell. So, and he says, I have so many years from my retirement. I'm going to relax. I'm going to eat. I'm going to drink. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be all these things. I'm going to be all these things. And what does God say to him? One word. Fool. You fool. Tonight you're going to die. And what's going to happen with all the money that you have? Who's, the, who's going to get it? Who's going to get it? So why is God called the fool? Because he thinks of himself only. He's thinking of himself. And again, how many times do we, uh, we say this here? It says here, he, he uses the word, and what shall I do when I have uh, to crop my stores? And he said, I will. I will pull down my barns and build new ones. And there I will all my grain and my goods. And I will to my soul say, and for many years, and I will drink and eat for many years. And he goes on. I said, I, me, my, it's me. I think we all get the point. He thinks of nobody but himself. And God calls him to fool. Because we don't live for ourselves. We live for, for, for others, even our enemies, even our, what, we, what we have or don't have. We give, we, we are to share ourselves. We are, can we see even now with this virus how much of a need we have for each other? How much of a need as, as human beings to be able to, again, hug our children and grandchildren or whatever, our parents, uh, whatever it may be? Can we see that we have this connection with each other? And God calls us, all of us, brothers and sisters. That's what God calls us, brothers and sisters. And this man here is talking about I, me, my. And God calls him a fool. God calls him a fool. How many times do we hear? I'm going to retire. And which is fine. I'm going to retire. And I'll have a good life. A month later, they're gone. We all hear that story all the time. A part of many people say, I'm going to retire, which is fine. We're not, we're not taking anything away from that. And I'm going to do this, and I'm going to retire, and I'm going to be fine. Well, how many times do we hear it? How many people do we know? And then uh, two, a month, two later, six months later, they're gone. So all that retirement is gone. In other words, from day to day to day, God knows from day to day we should be without Lord and without Savior. Every day. Not just, I uh, think I'll get away with this, and I, and, but I'm still a good guy. I'm still a good guy. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll do that. You know, in other words, to get away from things. Rather than to, to, to be helpful and kind and good and generous. Uh, to, to our neighbors. And that doesn't mean we're going to embrace everybody. It doesn't mean that at all. But the thought of the other, the thought not to have, not to have uh, 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 desires for the harm of the other, to have desire for the harm of the other. And how many of us do that? Oh, we, we, we rejoice when we, when we see that somebody loses their business. And we rejoice in it. As a matter of fact, that's a trait with some of the some countries that have that trait that they do, that if somebody gets hurt, if they lose their business and they're going out and they're not doing good, that they rejoice. They rejoice at the harm of the other. I don't see that in America. I, I see it in America. 
But I think as Americans, I think we do very well. That when we see success, we enjoy the success for the other. That's the heart. To give yourself to, uh, and to rejoice for the other person. That's why envy is no good. Envy is the, the opposite of that. Envy is me. I should have. It's me. And that's not, that's not what God said. God says, why were you not somewhat generous and thinking of others? Somewhere. Whatever that might have been. He wasn't. He was me. My. I. And that is who he was. Inside himself. If we are by ourselves, we are empty. We have to have the love of Christ and the love of each other in our hearts. And that's the gospel of today. And may our Lord and Savior be